It was a historically bad season for Louisville last year, but North Carolina benefited as Jalen Withers ultimately decided to transfer to Carolina. What will the North Carolina native bring to the team this year? Uh, we'll find out as Coach Pat Kilby and I unpack it and carry on the roster preview series today. You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. It's your host, Isaac Shade. I'll be joined in just a minute by our guy, Coach Pat Kilby, and we want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listener watch every single day. We're rolling on this week with our roster preview series. We have now Pat Kilby already finished off the freshmen, Elliot Cadeau, Zayden High, the sophomores, Seth Trimble and Jalen Washington, and the juniors, Harrison Ingram and James Aconqua. Now, we are skipping the one. There is one senior on this roster, and he goes by the name of R. Period J. Period Davis. Because, Pack, here's the thing Jalen Withers is listed on the roster as a grad student, and technically he is. This is his fifth year in college. He's graduated already, but it's only his fourth year of eligibility. He redshirted after his freshman year at Louisville. And because of COVID eligibility, can play this year and next year as well. So that's kind of the confusing where things sit with Jalen. We'll get back around to RJ on next week's show, so stay tuned for that. But today we do go to Jalen Withers. Now, Pack, unfortunately, same as last week with James Aconqua, I could not find Jalen Withers' middle name anywhere. And that mm-hmm. makes me so sad because that's one of my like favorite things that happens on these shows. So, folks, if you're listening or watching and you can track down or know Jalen's middle name, let us know. Pack, with that in mind, let's have you do what you always do. Let us know this man's bio and what he did last year at Louisville. Sure. So, yeah, obviously Jalen Withers, um, he's a grad transfer to North Carolina position of forward. And I could see him playing anywhere between the two through four spot Um, from Charlotte, North Carolina. So he's originally a North Carolina boy, six foot nine height, 215 pounds. So he's got some really good size to him. Uh, Jersey number 24, the mom. Yes, sir. Sorry. That excites me because that was always my number in baseball. (laughs) That's one of my favorite numbers, too. Big Cubby fan here. Um, <laughs> not Jeff Gordon? Yeah. I like Jeff Gordon just fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a NASCAR guy. I got I to gotta admit, it. I apologize. I know uh, people are so mad at me for saying that right now, but it's just not <laughs> my thing. Anyway, well, keep going. As far as I'm concerned, it's good for Sunday naps. but uh, <laughs> That and golf. Like, yeah. I'm also not a big <laughs> golf guy. Yeah. I'm not racking up uh, – Good points today. Keep going, Pack. <laughs> All right. So Jalen on social media, uh, you can catch him on on Twitter at Jalen Withers, J A E L Y N Withers. Um, same thing with Instagram, Jalen Withers. Same just like the Conquo last week, man. Yeah. We love it. Not it's only that, great. it's just his name. Even better. Yep. Nothing special. Nothing crazy. Jalen Withers. Uh, let me run you through some stats real quick. Uh, 32 games last year. He played in all 32. Uh, started 29 of the 32. Averaged 25.2 minutes per game with a season high of 38. Uh, Hubert must have coached that game. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, points. That's great. Eight, 8.9 points per game, five and a half rebounds, uh, 25 total assists, 71 total turnovers. 13 blocks, 22 steals. Um, Field goal percentage was 43.3. He was 97 of 224 from the field. 40 for for 96 from three, which was 41.7%. 50 of 68 from the free throw line, which was good for 73.5%. Man, I, I got a couple things here, Pac. First off, one of the things we got to note is that he's from Charlotte. And I, I just, I think there's something to be said about somebody coming home to play close to home 
and and what that can do for a player, even just their psyche. Pac, what, what do you think about that? What do you think coming back home closer to Charlotte is going to do for Jalen Withers? Well, it's huge. I mean, it's your home state, which, you know, when you talk to most kids or most uh, college players, it's one of their one of their goals is to re- represent the universities in their state uh, because it means something, you know, it's mm. home. And, you know, then you get, you add in the fact that he's going to be closer to family, um, which there's a comfort factor to that. Yeah. Uh, friends that he grew up with will be able to more easily make his game and spend time with him. And so, uh, I mean, those things, they just, it's not like a huge, it's not just one huge thing, but it's a bunch of little things that add up that make being home special. And so I'm really, you know, Carolina in the past has done a good job of keeping some of those top recruits in state. And I'm glad we've got Jalen back as a Tar Heel and in his home state. Yeah. Me too. Excited to see what that can do for him. And it's also really good because think about how many times it's been like, oh man, Carolina's playing Louisville or whoever it is that has this kid from North Carolina that the Tar Heels didn't recruit. And then he goes off for 89 points in the game. So don't have to worry about that with Jalen because he's one of us now. Now, Pac, I, I got to question something you said a minute ago, because I don't know that I agree. And I want to know, like, change my mind on this. You said you think that Jalen Withers will play, can can play, I guess I should say, anywhere from the four down to the two. You really think this man's playing shooting guard this year for the Tar Heels at some point? Okay. I'm not saying he will. Okay. I'm saying, but I do think he could. Um, you know, I mean, I look at it. He's got a decent guard skill set. He was 41% from three. Um, so he's not, and now his assist to turnover ratio says he's not a guard at all. <laughs> uh, but well, you know, I, think, I, I don't think he's going to play the two, but I think he could. Uh, but we don't have a necessity to for him to. Our backcourt is is full enough as it is. Yeah. But you know, like if he were to make it to the next level or um, like a G League or anything like that, I could see him, you know, filling in in a two three role. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't necessarily foresee it at Carolina. Yeah, because his height screams four or three at the next level and and probably definitely some three this year for Carolina. But man, at 215, there's no way he's playing the four in the NBA. Like would have to bulk up from that. So yeah, yeah, agreed. So let's talk about what we do expect for him. What, like, I'm really curious to see what his role will be. Starter coming off the bench. And if he's coming off the bench, you know, sixth man, seventh, eighth. Where, Where do you see that playing out? typically for him? Because I think we might see a couple different starting lineups that Coach Davis tinkers with this year. Yeah, I think we could see a lot of experiments going on early. Um, now, based on all some of the scheduling that's came out, <laughs> I don't know that how much time we have to experiment. So we need to get it figured out quick. Um, but I could see what I see him settling into is the sixth slash seventh man role. Hmm. Um, you know, just being that the ball of energy and that that um, electricity that he brings kind of with his game, bringing that off the bench, uh, spelling Harrison Ingram or even uh, Cormac. And, I, you know, I just – I foresee that for him. I, the reason I don't necessarily foresee him as a starter is because I don't think he's better than Harrison Ingram or Cormac Ryan at that three or four That's spot. That's what they do, yeah. Right, but I think he's uh, – we may see him start some, but I think he's he's definitely going to bring some of that electricity off the bench that we've lacked the last couple of years. I think that's a great point. Yeah, and, and it's I, I like what you're saying there because it's not that what he does isn't starter level. It's just that it seems like what Cormac can do that fits this team and what Harrison Ingram can do that fits this team probably matters more – as a cohesive unit as part of the starting five. But then what was going to be able to do when he does come in is going to bring a whole different dynamic to the team. And I think uh, that's something that not a lot of teams around the league are going to be able to match. That said, Pac, I think one of the things that we have to be keenly aware of is guys coming in and accepting a different role. You talked about 
Uh, Jalen averaging 25.2 minutes a game last year at Louisville, starting 29 out of 32. I got to imagine all of that's coming down. I don't see him getting 25 minutes a game as part of this team. I don't see him starting 29 out of how many games Carolina plays. Uh, you talk often about role definition players accepting their roles. <laughs> how would you handle a conversation, you know, like as you're coaching with a, a young man who's coming in, has played one type of higher role for the team, and now is going to be expected to play, you know, not a less important role, but less minutes and probably less stats. How do you sell that? Well, I think, you know, when, when you look at where, where am I wrong, is, tell me, first of all, tell me, am I wrong or do you agree? No, I agree. You know, okay. his role his role's been a challenge. There's no doubt okay. about it. There's too much, to me, there's too much talent for it not to change. Okay, good. Um, now that said, go ahead with what I asked you. So, but what you, what you've got to look at, and I'm sure Jalen's looking at it like this too. If minutes was all that mattered and being a player on a bad team, was all he cared about, then he would have stayed at Louisville. I think he entered the transfer portal because he wanted to be a part of a team that knew what it takes to win in March. And so when you look at that, he's probably going into this knowing his role is going to change. And you pitch that, hey, your role is going to change, but you're still crucial. You're still a crucial piece for us. But, you know, obviously your minutes are going to go down, but you're going to be a part of a team and a program that wins and knows how to win, you know? So I think that's, that's what you sell them on, you know, obviously, yeah, your role's changing, but you're sacrificing some minutes for success. And wins. Wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's something I know, I know everyone's different, but that's something I'd sign up for every day of the week. I want to play, I want to be on the court, but if I get to be part of a culture, a history like North Carolina's and more W's, well, it's not hard to have more W's than Louisville did last year, but <laughs> my, the, the point remains. And so, you know, there now that said, there's some things that he can do uh, positionally and with his skill set that others might not be able to, that he might just with his play demand, like will scream to Hubert Davis, you can't take me off the court. So that would be fun to see as well. Speaking of that, what we want to get into next is talking about Harrison, e Harrison Ingram, Jalen Withers' strengths, uh, that really make him stand out? And where are some areas that you might try to exploit if you're an opposing coach? And what's going to turn into a successful year for Jalen Withers? We're going to hit in all of that in just a second. But first, this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by Nutrafol. You don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. In fact, did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? It's normal, but it doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of that thinning with Nutrafol, which is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Go to Nutrafol.com slash men and take their hair health wellness quiz. Identify causes of your thinning hair, and then Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through whole body wellness. Take that first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair, because for a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L, dot com slash men, and enter promo code Locked On College. One more time, that's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code Locked On College. All right, Pac, we're talking about Jalen Withers today, the transfer from Louisville coming over to North Carolina. And we want to go to what we always do in the second segment in these roster preview episodes by looking at what, what is the unique thing? If we could distill it down to one, maybe two things that really makes Jalen stand out that are going to get him on the court and keep him on the court, what would you say that is? Well, you know, I think Jalen is like a – I think he's kind of got this – persona of being a highlight reel waiting to happen. Um, he's got extreme athleticism, and I think that bodes well for him defensively. If 
he can be engaged and disciplined in his principles. Um, I think, you know, obviously he shoots it pretty well for his size. And so if we can get some consistent shot making for him, that's going to be something that's crucial for him to play, uh, play for us as well. Yeah. Agreed with that. I, I think that's the thing for me is, you know, I think about like, some of his attributes, I would probably say, are similar to what Dontre Styles left behind. I think he'll pick some of that up at a different position, right? But but from an athletic standpoint, I think he brings that, albeit with better shooting than what Dontrez brought. And I think for me, that's what it is. You know, um, it, he hasn't done this his whole career, but last year, att- like not only did he uh, hit above forty percent from three, but did it on four point eight attempts per game and I, or excuse me, that was per 40 minutes, um, shot it, uh, 41.7% on 96 total attempts last season. And so, um, I think if he can replicate that, even if he could like higher volume in a Hubert Davis offense, but still be hover around 38, I would love that. And so I think for me, that's the kind of thing of like, if Jalen is hitting that level of percentage of threes, He's going to force Hubert Davis's hand to say, you got to keep me on this court and you can't take me off. Now, Pac, what about the other side of it? If you're game planning to play North Carolina and uh, you see number 24 in the lineup, what are you telling your guys to do to try to exploit some of uh, what Jalen Withers still needs to grow in? Well, you know, I think actually Jalen's got a pretty well-rounded game. Um, I like a lot of the things that he does. Uh, but the one thing that I question or not even question, I just need to see more of is his shot selection at times. Um, just going back, watching some of his film from his time at Louisville. And so, you know, I'm, you know, I'm thinking if I'm an opposing coach, can you, can you ball pressure him enough that he doesn't feel comfortable shooting from the perimeter but maybe you can force some tough contested twos because I think he falls into that trap sometimes. Mm. And if you can force that consistently, then, you know, you've got him taking shots that, that he doesn't need to, and that's not beneficial for Carolina. And so to me, I think that's a weakness, but there's not many things I look at this game and go, Oh, that's a weakness. Now there's things I look and go, okay, he can get better at this. Yep. Uh, he can improve, but he's not just like glaringly weak in one particular area, in my opinion. Yeah. And and it's that kind of thing where I keep I keep trying to figure out like how much of last year at Louisville do I take as legitimate of who Jalen Withers is as a basketball player, mm-hmm. and how much of it do we take with a grain of salt because of what Louisville was last year? And, and I struggle with that both with what he did well and poorly and everyone, you know, L Ellis and that whole team. And so that, that is just a weird thing that I just don't know where to put yet with, with Jalen Withers. And so I kind of want to, I'm trying to do my best to like reserve judgment until we, we see it on the court with Carolina guys or Carolina alums or any of that. Um, and by the way, when I, I was saying 4.8, three point attempts per game, that was per his port per 40 minute number last year. His actual true number was three, uh, three point attempts per game last year, 41.7%. So that, you know, live with that and we'll take that absolutely any day of the week. Okay. Pack. Imagine you are Hubert Davis. You're sitting down with Jalen Withers at the end of this season. And you say, Jalen, here's the deal, buddy. It's been a successful year for you this year. And here's why blank. If he's been able to accept that new role. Mm and thrive in it. You know, it goes back to what we were talking about. It's it's a different role than what he had at Louisville, most likely. It's probably going to be less than 25 minutes a game. But it goes back to um, a little bit of what you talked about a little uh, earlier. You know, how much of what he did at Louisville is truly him? He can maximize his potential in less minutes with the talent that's going to be around him at Carolina. So if he can buy into that role and um, – you know, he can thrive in it, then I think he can be highly effective. And we can look back and go, Withers was an X factor for Carolina. Mm. Because Mm. it's like you said, if he gets in the game and he brings that energy and he knocks down a couple trays off the bench, it's going to force Hubert's hand. 
And it could be the difference in five to ten games this season. And that, to me, is enough to, to say he's an X factor. So um, if he, you know, like I said, if he buys into that role and he thrives in it, then I think, uh, you know, that's been a very successful year for Jalen. Man. Yeah, that's a great point. And uh, I hadn't I hadn't begun to think yet about this team and X factors, but I think he's got to be considered in that conversation for sure. Um, and so, man, that's interesting. I'm, I'm like spiraling on that a little bit right now. Well, I'm going to let my brain spiral a little bit more, I guess, because we've still got to get to our comps for Jalen Withers and look at over-unders. Pack, we got four of them today. That's exciting. So we want to get right to that. And we'll hit it in just a second. All right, Pack, we are back. We're talking Jalen Withers here today on our Carolina Basketball Roster Preview Series. And we wrap up the show by first getting to our comps, where we either look at uh, a Carolina comp for a player or an NBA comp for a player. What have you, sir, for Mr. Jalen Withers? Yeah, so I... Um... I kind of racked my brain. I'll just be honest. I thought, I think he reminds me a little bit of Leakey with, you know, a higher offensive skill set. And like you said earlier, he reminds me a little bit of Don Trez. Hmm. Um, but I knew I wasn't crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds <laughs> me a lot, but also, you know, a higher skill set offensively. So, um, but I think I'm going to go Leakey because, you know, Leakey just, had that explosiveness in his athleticism. Uh, and I, you know, when, when I think of Leakey, I kind of flash back to that dunk he had against Florida State. It was Ooh, just, off the wing where he just yeah, went. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I think Withers is going to do that, you know, maybe even more than Leakey did. Um, and they're, you know, they're comparable in their body types. Um, so I, I think that there's a lot of similarities there. So I'm going to compare him to Leakey. But obviously, I think we all can agree Withers has a lot uh, better skill set than Leakey did offensively. Yeah. And it, yeah, I mean, that's that kind of that give and take we often talk about. If he could give, you know, 60% to 75% of what Leakey was defensively, but be, you know, if he could be 50 to 60% higher than Leakey was offensively, that that probably offsets in the kind of way you're looking for. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, we can't uh, statistically compare that um, from any kind of substantial standpoint. I mean, you could look at the raw numbers, but there's no way to truly quantify that. But uh, the point is a great one. All right, Pack over-unders. Here we go. I'm so excited. We're starting with that three-point shooting we talked about just a minute ago. Over under 40% from three for the season. I'm going to take the under, um, but don't let that discourage you too much. I think he's probably going to be around 38%. I think he's going to have a higher volume than he shot before just because the style will play and the personnel around him is going to be different than what he had at Louisville. It's going to open up shots for him. Uh, so I think I'll take him at under 40% three-point field goal percentage, but a higher volume of attempts than he had last season, which was 96 total attempts. Yeah. Yep. I'm going under as well. I mean, you look back at what he's done in his career, his uh, redshirt freshman season at Louisville shot 38% on just 1.1 attempts. His sophomore year, 23.4%. And that's the one that gives me pause. Um, but, you know, I think the other two years are closer to each other than that one is. So I actually think that that sophomore year was the outlier, not what happened last year. I do think there is some regression, but if I can add on to what you were saying, it's kind of like we've talked about with Harrison Ingram that I think because Harrison doesn't have to be the guy anymore, his shooting percentages are going to go up. And I think the same is going to be true for Jalen. So I think he's going to stay right around that threshold, but give me just a little bit under 40%. As well, I'm right there with you. All right, next. Here's an interesting one. It goes back to what we talked about earlier. Over under 10 starts this season. I'm taking the under. Um, it's, and it goes back to what we talked about earlier. I just don't think, you know, that, that we can afford to have 10 different, you know. I don't think that he will be in the final starting lineup, and I don't think we have him – 
10 starts before we can figure that out because we've got a loaded non-conference schedule. So I think I'm taking the under there. Yeah. Same with me. I, I probably set that one a little bit high. You know, I probably should have set it at like five and you know, that, that might've been a little bit closer, but we'll, we'll see with it, but I'm definitely taking the under on 10 starts with that. Now, Two more. The number is the same here. So I want to give them to you actually in tandem pack. And so if you take the over, it's because they're both over. If you take the under, it's because they're both under. Um, but I guess I could let you have one of each. We'll see. You take it how you want. So over under one and a half steals per game, over under one and a half dunks per game. So here's how we can do this. Actually, I've just figured it out as I was talking this through. Over under three combined dunks and steals per game. Mm, okay. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Um, I'll take, you know what? Give me the over. Give me the over. I think he's going to be around two steals a game. Okay. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll add a dunk a game I, because I think that's possible with the, the way we'll be in transition this year. Man, I and hope so. Athleticism. So I'll, I'll take the over. Over under three. I'm gonna have to take the under. It grieves me to do so. Um, but I I think I would actually give him a higher dunk per game average than steals per game average. I, I'm gonna put it that way. That's what's gonna be interesting to me. But I still think the total of the two will be under three, not by much, but give me two and a half as the total for combined dunks and steals. I like that. That's an interesting one, combining two stat categories. We might have to come back around to that in a future week. All right, folks, you've been gearing up for this next week on our roster preview. We are hitting the man, RJ Davis. Buckle up. It's going to be a great show, a fun conversation. We're going to have to figure out if we can keep that right index finger healthy this year or not. For Pat Kilby, I'm Isaac Shade, and I want to say thank you for joining us on today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow Pat at Coach underscore K23, and you can follow me at Isaac Shade. Email the show, Locked on Tar Heels at gmail.com. Subscribe on audio or video platforms. Heck, do it at both. You can smash the like button and leave comments on your thoughts on Jalen Withers. What did we get right? And where did we go horribly awry in today's conversation? Hey, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll be right back with you tomorrow. But until then, peace. Peace.